So what exactly is this? What is this? Ooh, okay, it looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? There, okay. Okay, what this is, this is the new 7 Friday 3D, 3D printed watch. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. 7 Friday has been around for 10 years. They are celebrating their 10th anniversary. Um, so this is kind of the watch they've used to kind of bring that out to the world. Now they've been, always been kind of a different uh, company. They're not, they don't call themselves a watch company so much as they call themselves a lifestyle. Not a lifestyle company, but kind of a, kind of a way to live. Um, uh, they do other things like they produce sunglasses and so on. Um, but they've always been kind of uh, more fun than high watch making, if you want to call it that. Um, They've generally been uh, somewhat different, quirky type designs that appeal to people uh, using inexpensive movements. Um, uh, now this watch, this is a 10th anniversary watch and it's a little bit different and it, it's very, very surprising in certain ways. And we're gonna explain that. Uh, for one thing, okay, it's a 3D printed watch. Uh, the movement itself is a Celita SW300-1, uh, which, uh, so it, it's kind of a step up from what they used to use. Um, it's a self-winding watch, um, and, and there'll be an issue I'm going to explain in a bit. Uh, but kind of using a similar, uh, a similar look, which is a digital readout of the time based on that. And I got to tell you, I wasn't expecting a lot out of this, but having it on my wrist, I was surprised at how easy it actually is to read. Okay. Uh, surprising. Okay. Just seriously surprising. But anyway, um, now uh, they use uh, the, the inner case of the watch is titanium. Uh, the inner part here, uh, well, you can't really see, is, is, is titanium. Uh, and, uh, but they use the 3D printing uh, for um, the external parts, which you can see that are obvious. Uh, but then you can also see uh, uh, internal parts that are 3D printed because it has a kind of a texture. Okay, it has a kind of a texture. It's kind of a rough texture. There's some flexibility to it. If you want to, you can see it flex, right? You can kind of, there, so you can kind of see it flex. Um, and, and that's external to these parts, external here, internal there, I'm sorry, internal there, uh, internal and external there, okay? Um, uh, they, they use uh, PA11, which is a sustainable caster-based polyamide, which basically, Think of the swatches where, where, where they, they're using reusable material, okay? Uh, sustainable material, sorry. Um, now, okay, so you basically tell the time, uh, or this is very simple, it's, it's 1.55 or something like that, or 12.55 actually. Okay, uh, but it does, it does I, got, I gotta say, there are two things that kind of surprised me about this watch, because it is large, right? It, it, it's kind of, it's, it's big. Having said that, the two things that surprised me are, number one, it doesn't feel large. Okay, it doesn't feel large because um, it, it, okay, it's very light, right? It's titanium and, and, and polyamide. So uh, it, it's, it's, it fits very well on the wrist. Um, surprises the heck out of me. Uh, and second is that um, it, uh, you, uh, I'll, I'll show this to you later, but b because of the shape, um, it kind of wraps, okay? So it, it almost feels like kind of nothing on your wrist. Okay, as big as it looks here, it doesn't translate. I don't have a large wrist. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of at the very uh, closest, second of the closest uh, type uh, holes for general bracelets. So I'm surprised. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just really surprised. It works. So, so in terms of that, this watch works. Uh, in terms of visibility, I gotta say, yes, it does work. Is this a look for everyone? No, it's really, really not. Um, uh, it might be a fun thing to wear, uh, but there are some people who wear, wear Seven Friday watches on a regular basis, and that's fine. Um, what, what we're interested in is what to think about with Seven Friday, okay? Because it, it's been around 10 years, okay? And 10 years ago, the, the watchmaking scene was very, very different. There were, there were already micro brands and niche brands that were coming up. Uh, um, this was when... Uh, the general larger companies were facing some problems. So all of a sudden there was more uh, ability to, uh, production ability available. There were more people doing little things. Um, you could still buy, uh, well you could buy, we were, it was getting hard, but you could still buy movements from the Swiss, but you could also buy movements from Japan, which is what they did uh, before. Um, and um, 
and, and there were all these watch enthusiasts that were just trying, trying to create things. Okay. Now, in uh, if you trans kind of move this to the modern world, um, uh, there's an argument that, that, that seven, the Seven Friday group was actually kind of ahead of the curve on this um, because they're using their vision of a, of a, move, of, of a, of a design that they like, uh, which is very similar to what people are doing, whether it's Corona Tokyo or whether it's uh, Ming. They're just taking their vision and putting it onto a watch, and that watch isn't necessarily an expensive manufacturer movement. Uh, because they're concentrating on something else. And that's kind of the same thing these guys are doing. Are they a niche brand? Are they a micro brand? Are they an independent watchmaker? They don't define themselves, actually. Uh, they don't define themselves. And that's fine. Are they going to appeal to everybody? No. What are the positives and what are the negatives? This is really not a watch that most people are going to jump to, which is fine because they only made a very few of them. Here's the thing. 3D printing is far more important than we realize it is. We think of it in some ways as what people used to make toys uh, or what people used to make um, little things. Uh, but it's an extremely important technology for several reasons, not the least of which is honestly space exploration because one of the problems that 3D printing solves is the need to bring a lot of heavy stuff and redundant stuff up into space. So 3D printing solves that. Okay, so what we think of 3D printing, which is a little thing that you, you make a bead for your daughter or whatever, um, that's not where it's going. And, and there are already uses of 3D printing for metal. There's been 3D printing for, for skin. Um, so this is an important technology. And no one's really, really done it this way. So along those lines, it's kind of fun. Um, on one hand, you would say, yeah, this is a way, way funky looking watch. But on the other hand, there are really, really expensive independent watchmakers that are making watches that look somewhat similar to this. Um, and, and they're looked at as collectible and so on. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. I, I, I think this goes back to the same thing, which is I think there are lots more niches now than there ever have been. So will these watches speak to people or not? We don't know. It doesn't matter because there aren't going to be many of them anyway. Um, they're still going to do their same stuff and so on. Would I wear it? Um, I might wear it for fun. But I, I find it very, very interesting. I had fun photographing it because I got a new moment lens from my phone. So I was playing around with it and I could get, I can't do it now, but I could get really up close to it. And you, you'll, you'll see all the, you'll see the texture. It's kind of fun because it, it feels like... <sighs> It kind of feels like thick leather in some ways. Um, okay, there's a lot of flex. You can see the flex there. You can see the flex there. Um, you can see the flex there. So it, it, it kind of has a softness to it. This is a celebration of a small company put together by a bunch of guys that just wanted to do something they wanted to do. And they were relatively successful at it. Um, they had shops in some places. They did uh, direct to consumer in most places. Uh, people recognized it, it spoke to people, and they enjoyed it. And this is merely the way they're celebrating this watch after 10 years. And after being around 10 years through COVID, which is not an easy thing to do, uh, and this, we're really going to see that soon. Uh, but there, um, I think it's fun. I like that look. It really looks kind of spaceshipy. Oh, okay. I was talking about the movement. This is the one thing I see with the movement. It's really not easy to uh, wind it because you're putting it, you're doing it from here, okay? Uh, and then you gotta pull it out there, okay? Now the thing is, we've always told people that um, take your watch off your wrist when you're winding it because if you do it when you're on your wrist, uh, you're adding stress to the, uh, the, the crown and therefore the, the pin or whatever behind it and, and that's not what it's supposed to do. And we've talked to watchmakers, they've said that's the worst thing you can possibly do. Now, the thing is with this, you're already, you know, it, by nature, it's, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do. You gotta be a bit more careful, but you know, I mean, it's a self winder. If you use it a lot, you'll be fine anyway. Um, but okay, so let's just do this, okay? Um, it's fun, you know, it's kind of different. <laughs> I'll wear it just because people keep always looking at my wrist and they wonder what the heck I'm wearing. So let's do that. They'll probably think it's something else. So we shouldn't do that just for fun. But there, um, uh, so because you're, you're kind of coming at it from a, a different angle, you gotta get used to how much it's gonna click, which is fine. What I really wanna do 
is I want to find out if I can take this thing apart. I want to find out if I can take the whole thing apart. I might need special crew. Oh, the NFC, okay. Uh, whether people like or dislike NFCs, I'm not going to go into that. Yes, I will. Um, a lot of people don't like them because they think they use up so much energy that they're a waste. Uh, having said that, there are, uh, that tends to be because of the uh, supposed collectible art world. Uh, having said that, um, NFCs are a good way of, uh, arguably they're a good way of keeping track of um, certain products. Um, and there is a point to that. Uh, but that's anyway so the point of this is, is this time this goes with an nfc as well to supposedly keep uh track of the provenance of a piece uh what i want to do is take this thing apart and see what i can do but i kind of got to get permission for that <laughs> so we'll see if they give me permission right okay so there anyway there you go that's the seven friday 3d 3d watch it's not fully 3d uh but um in the near future that may well be where they're gonna go so we shall see thank you very very much mm -hmm.